So this isn't gonna be at all like our normal videos. Today we're gonna be swapping over the shop from our one-off custom type shop to production mode. We've got two jobs coming up back to back that are just knock them out as fast as we can. We got deadlines to hit. So we're gonna go through how we do it. Let's go. So for this job, we're building a bunch of shelving. It's effectively just pallet racking, except the different size, different application, different width, than normal pallet racking, which is why we're having to go full custom for it. Now, originally I wasn't even gonna do this sort of video on this. We were just gonna knock these projects out. And then I got to thinking that some people might get something from it. Tommy has already cut up a lot of the material for this job and added flanges to bolt pieces together to the legs he cut. So we're gonna jump right into putting the jig together. Okay, so I know this doesn't look like much, but what we're doing is setting a jig up to make these L-shaped pieces. This first piece gets dropped in. Just pull it tight up against these guys. Second piece dropped into place right here. Push flush up against. Yeah, you guys, you can see that a jig here is totally worth it. We had a jig to put the flanges on the legs, we had another jig to put the flanges on the ends of these eight foot long runner pieces. Those flanges are just plasma cut 10 gauge going onto this inch and a half square tube. It's pretty easy to do. You can see on this end piece that we just cut a square into the flange with a little dog bone on the corners so that the square tube would slide right into the flange, square it all up, you're good to go. The jig probably takes 20, 30 minutes to build and get right, get all the pieces tacked down nice and square. But this run that you're seeing here on the screen uninterrupted took one minute, 58 seconds start to finish to make one of these assemblies. We have to make 60 of them. So getting that cycle time down is not only good for production, but also just for peace of mind and your sanity. So you're not doing the same thing for four or five days in a row. If you tried to clamp all these up, even with something like a fireball square, it's going to take some time. The process just repeats over and over. Like I said, we're going to make 60 of these, and with the jig elevated up in the air a couple inches like it is, we can make both the left and right-sided pieces because we can flip the runner over and the flanges don't hit the table. Work beautifully. We just laid into the assembly until... pounds of wire so far in this project. So for a while now we've been using HTP's wire as well as their machines. Previously I always figured getting it local would be cheaper, uh, but I actually checked out their listings and their shipping wire to me delivered for less than what I'm buying it for locally. And same quality wire, no difference whatsoever. So I've been real happy with this. So HTP is currently running a special on the Propulse 220. You get a bunch of extra accessories, all sorts of goodies. It's $2,200, not even $2,195. I've got links down in the description. You guys want to check it out. It helps the channel out. It's a great machine. It's up to you, though. It takes a while to feed wire out of a 15-foot gun. Let's get back to it. Hey guys, check these pants out here. I'm not trying to bombard you with sponsored messages, but I love these things. They're FXD WP1 work pants from Great Lakes Workwear. Super comfortable. When I find something, I like it. I'm gonna tell you all about it. And these pants have been perfect. They're just comfortable. The pockets are great. You know, makes me run a little bit faster in the shop and that's worth something. Hopefully you guys get something out of it too. We're just laying into finishing off these L pieces, you know, anything you can do to make 60 of something go a little bit faster is definitely going to help. And, you know, comfortable pants, somewhere to put your phone, music, I like it. There you go. It is done. Oh. That round was done. That was a lot. That was a lot. That was a lot. So there we go. We are done. There are 30 of this side. And 30 the other side. Put a little red paint mark every 10. Easy to keep track of the count. And now we're going to get ready to move on to the next step, which is putting all the cross members between these two. Tommy is cleaning all those off right now. It's much easier to wipe all the oil off them while they're straight pieces than to go back afterward and have to get into all the nooks and crannies.
I got it. That's another thing when you're in the shop. Whoever has the hardest task at the moment has the right of way. Tommy's moving metal over my head, I duck. He doesn't need to be lifting stuff higher than he needs to. In between all the work we were doing assembling these shelves, we were also running the cuts for a second job that's coming up that's gonna be pretty intensive on the plasma cutter. It's over 1,900 pierce points per sheet cutting out these decorative table base elements and you know it's cutting I'm not gonna run a whole lot of footage of it you guys know what it looks like but it was a heck of a job so here we go we've got this whole sheet there's 18 of the panels in this sheet we used up the dead space at the end of the rocket stove basically no issues the tip or the consumables burned out right as they were cutting down here then jumped over and it did these four holes before I heard the problem and came over and stopped the machine, changed the tip, came back, recut them. After a little wire brushing, they will be fine. So will that edge. This edge actually gets buried in the final design, so it doesn't even matter. Now Tommy's over here running out of scrap run of the last four months-ish of scrap steel, and it's gonna be a bunch, so it'll be interesting to see what that comes back as for the total. Scrap prices are still low, though. Right, so Tommy took the steel, it was 1,960 pounds, got almost 69 bucks for it. It's hardly even worth doing, but whatever. I've got a card here if you want to see our process for running scrap to the scrap yard. I always just give Tommy the money as a little bit of a bonus. Why not? We're going to clean off the table and spray everything down with uh, CRC's Weld Clean 350. This isn't a sponsored thing, I just like this anti-spatter spray. Keeps everything from sticking to the table as we work, makes it easier to clean off at the end of each step. The pieces are going to be laid out on the table, starting with the two L's. We've got a left and a right. The flanges are the only thing that is reversed between those two, but it is important, and we managed to not screw any of them up, so I was very happy about that. Because of those flanges, we need to stand the pieces up off the table uh, by about an inch and three quarter, so I've got some one inch and some three quarter square tube. We'll tack them together, make some standoffs, and then we are gonna build the first one of these final assemblies on the table just by tacking everything together. That leaves me the flexibility to make sure everything's square. Of course, just square it up as you go. Once we know everything's right, I'm gonna lock everything together by welding that one out fully. If you pay attention to where you put your tacks, you can do that without needing to clamp everything down. Then we'll take and affix some spacers or generally just pieces of scrap to the table. Again, just tacked into place that will hold that first assembled piece in place. Then we can remove it and start very quickly grabbing the pieces, one of each sides of the L's and then all of our cross members and drop them right into the jig. Then weld it out again the cycle time on this was about three minutes, pretty quick. It's where you want to be. You want to just be able to bang these out. We're taking 60 of these L's, six of the cross members, and then making 30 of the final piece. It's a perfect thing to have, you know, come together for you. And the jig, again, I know I say this all the time when talking about them, the jig is gold. It's worth every dollar you spend on the scrap steel to build it. It's worth every minute of time. It speeds you up and it keeps you sane when you're doing this repetitive work. I don't know how production welders do their jobs. I would go crazy. I love the variety of what we do and this process is perfect to let us have that variety but in limited doses rather than having to deal with something that's just super, super repetitive. Hey, quit making so much noise! Hey! Be quiet for a second. All right, so we finally got the jig put together for the final step of the assembly. Here's what we're making. You can see we've got basically the two L's we've already built. We're putting six cross members in there. Here's the jig. We were all just voting and decided it looked like some sort of torture chamber or something, but works beautifully. We cut out these little triangles, a 10 gauge, just a, you know, an easy shape to use. You can jig it up a couple different ways with that shape. Let's lay into it. 
There's two things I wanted to throw into this video. The first is that if you are gonna be anywhere near Cleveland in the middle of June, you should check out Maker Summer School. I'm gonna be up there teaching a class on Fusion 360 and how I use it to render out projects so I can show a customer what it's gonna look like before we ever buy any material. Secondly, I wanna thank all the people on screen here, my patrons for supporting what I'm doing. They stick by through thick and thin. We got slow months like February's turned out to be as far as videos and we got more detailed months where we dive into it. It's the best place to ask me questions. I'm the most responsive there. I try to be everywhere, but of course, I'm gonna be the most of the patrons. Thank you all again. All right guys, so during our Black Friday sale, we did boxes of crap and it's just scrap metal. They were fairly popular. We sold out, they've been out of stock for a while and we've got a down day here. So we decided we'd do a special run using all virgin steel of a bunch of different profiles of steel. I'll show you what we've got going on. So what we've done is cut a bunch of different square tubes. We've got more down here and here. We have solid square bar in inch and three quarters. We have round bar in three quarter. You can actually get two of those. Some pipe, a bunch of angle iron. You can see what's going on in there. They're all stacked to ship. Got a couple different angles in eight, three sixteenths and quarter inch thick. Well, quarter inch is this plate here. More plate, more square tube. And then we'll just throw a little bit of that in on every order. We're making 20 of these. This is what it looks like. It's about 35 pounds of steel when it's all said and done. They're gonna be up on the website at weldityourselfkits.com. Link down in the description. Thanks for your time. What we did was actually stick the 200, which has a 15 foot gun on it, up here and drop the gun down as well as routing the ground cable. And that's gonna let me run around the table with less chances to get tangled up. We've gotta knock off the edges of these profiles like that so that they'll slip right in here like this around this joint. We want these to be basically flush to the plate so that there's not a gap there. Same thing here. We want a little bit of, a, of an offset so that if this has a bend in it, it doesn't bind up the whole mechanism. So while we jump through assembling another one of these shelf units, I'd be interested to know what you guys would charge for something like this in your area. For reference, there's 70 24 foot long sticks of inch and a half square tube, 14 gauge wall. We went through almost 30 pounds of 030 wire, used up basically a full cylinder of gas, and almost a full four by eight sheet of 10 gauge cutting all the flanges. We also installed them and cut down the plywood that went on top, although we did not supply that plywood. Let me know down there in the comments. We'll see who got closest to what my bid was. So I can't really say anything other than how happy I am. I have a team here that is killing us. Tommy decided he wanted to take on the challenge of doing all the welding for his final jig out. Happy to let him do it. It's worked out beautifully. And he's doing a pretty good job on it. We're halfway through now. And I'm not just kissing ass here. Tommy is a great asset to the shop. He's somebody who is open and willing to learn. He never really gets upset if you say, hey, you're not doing it right or you could do it better this way. You know, those are the sort of people you want to find. You want to cultivate that sort of personality, have that attitude, be pervasive in your shop and never be better than the people working for you or never think you're better than them because you'd be surprised what they can teach you and what they'll come up with that's going to improve the operation for everybody. Then on top of that, pay them accordingly. Tommy's pay has gone up significantly and he has earned every cent of that increase as well as his original base pay. All right, guys, we're going to end it right there. Join me next week. I appreciate y'all stopping by. We're going to finish up these projects, go through the rest of the install of them, and we'll get into kind of the nitty gritty on the differences and how I bid a production job versus a one-off custom artsy fartsy type of job that a lot of what we do is. Till next time, thanks for stopping by.